Uh, it's a, a brand kind of um, when we originally, well actually when I originally found uh, that to fit me was a lot of talk back and forth on the internet. Um, obviously we're a road redeveloping specific team. We really haven't dove into anything beyond Rotary and the name Rotary just itself was just a bad reputation, right? Um, so I owned it. Uh, that's where IED was developed from. Um, improvised explosive device. Everybody always asks, what does it stand for? It's like, it's pretty straightforward. It's improvised explosive device. A lot of that has to do with, we broke a lot of shit. So okay. that, that was where that name came from. Uh, the team, we have about four guys. One of my right hand man, Mike Bose. Uh, he also has an RX-7. He's also part of our team. Uh, Zach, he is one of our bigger guys. Very, very helpful. Helps us out of the track quite a bit and does a lot of the videotaping as well. I'm Sean, he also helps out. Uh, he actually wasn't with us this past weekend, unfortunately. Uh, and then Denon actually just kind of joined into the team as well. And then uh, we have a tuner who is also part of our team, Nelson Savario. That weekend racing, Mike did good. He took like second in his class. Yeah, Mike did really good. So that was the, the first event where in his class, it was actually a lot of the cars in that class run like 10s and 11s and his car uh, basically just would click into the 12s every now and then. He did really good, yeah, and yeah, he took awesome. second place, so, cool. yeah. yeah. Well, it was a whirlwind uh, just to get to the track. So the, the biggest point, or the biggest hurdles that we had was uh, leading up to the event, uh, Denon's car didn't even have a cage in it, and I would say that was about three weeks ago. So leading up to that, we were like, let's get full hands on deck on Denon's car. So Denon went through, sat down with me, created a build list of everything that we would need, uh, and then just basically submitted an order to Jags and Summit and uh, everything got shipped to my house. Uh, I went through, did all the fabrication for the cage. Things actually looked like we were on track, on pace for him to be able to make it to Proving Grounds. The day before, it was a Monday, the weekend after the cage was finished, that Monday, the following Friday, is actually Proving Grounds. So that week leading up, Monday we went to uh, get the cage certified to be able to be an 850 cage. And then also we went to the uh, to, to Hume's Dyno. Ryan, I would say we go there with cars. I probably had about five cars on his dyno. Sure. And I've had great success with all. All right, so yeah, Dino sure. Day. That was actually uh, that was a, a horrible day, to be honest with you. Um, it was raining. Denon's car did not have a roof on it. It still doesn't right now. We're still uh, getting that done, but we were trying to get something for him to even trailer his car down to the cities to get his chassis certified. So he ended up using my trailer. There was a bunch of issues even just to get to that point with uh, having a, a truck that uh, the wiring was messed up for him to be able to even use my trailer for trailer lights and then finally got down there. Everything went well with the certification. Uh, car's actually certified for an 850 ET uh, for the cage that we put in it. We, he got back to the dyno, or got back to Superior. I went to the dyno at Hume's, loaded that sucker up, did the first pull and it was just pissing fuel out of the intake uh, as soon as it hit boost. <laughs> generally are gonna um, rise and, and show themselves, show their face. Oh, the intake gasket was like a make your own intake gasket that was on there and it blew out right where the injectors were. And then we had to go in and make another make your own intake gasket because there was nothing available for an aftermarket LS6, LS1 intake gasket that was on the shelf. Denon went to uh, go get new intake gaskets and we were basically had the intake off on the dyno. His car on the way back 
alternator crapped out on his truck. I mean, it was just one thing after another saying that you will not run this car tonight. So we had to order that. Thankfully, we have that on there now. And, and what I would say is I even told Denon on the way back, it was, it was one of those deals where this might not be meant to be, but this is what's gonna decide whether you're gonna be able to make this event or not and just stick with it and trust that we'll get this done and don't give up. Because a lot of people would give up. Say, you know what, it's just not meant to be. We'll, we'll just bypass this weekend and we'll shoot for another one. But he stuck with it and uh, we ended up making it to the event, did a couple polls, sent the information to Ryan Humes and kind of walked through the data logs. Everything looked good. So uh, the first day that we went was roll racing. Attack went really well, uh, so that was the biggest thing, making sure that all of our, uh, even though the cage was certified for 850, we still had to have all of our gear to be able to run the car. Arm restraints, window netting, uh, drive shaft loop, all that stuff had to be installed in order for Denon to be able to run his car, same as mine, and I was actually going through and doing my licensing, so I had to get tech for license. Uh, something wrong with my car. I went 161 in roll racing previous on the last event. Um, average speed was like 157-ish. Uh, and my car, even with doing anti-leg, rolling anti-leg, I couldn't get out of 135, 134 mile an hour. So we knew that there was something up on the first pass. Dandy well in roll racing. Um, he was in the uh, the 140-ish range, 138 range. So he was actually up there for mile an hour. So he was doing pretty well. Everything was holding well uh, on his car. Uh, he went about three rounds roll racing and then uh, they race you against bikes, kind of like a draw straw type deal. And then once you race a crotch rock, it's going 190, 180. You don't stand a chance. Yeah. So hopefully they figure out something in the, the roll racing aspect for a better rule book on that one. Uh, when we did the logs on my car after the first couple roll races, uh, we found out the car was only making 20 pounds of boost, something going on with the wastegates. Uh, I knew that get needed to get more time and, and see what it was actually doing on the quarter mile. So. We just held off anything on Friday for mine, ran dead ends, and then uh, uh, waited till Saturday to start doing uh, drag racing. So leading up into the license, you have to run six passes. That's kind of how it runs. Um, we were hoping to get all of our passes done on Saturday. That wasn't the case. It's basically a, a half pass, half pass, moderate, moderate, and then a full, full. So I was able to get both my half passes and one of my moderates done for licensing on Saturday. Going into Sunday, it, it was like another... foggy, drizzling, raining. It was one of those days where it's like, I don't even know if this is gonna happen, to be able to have enough time even to run the car for the next three passes that we had to do. So, moderate pass, the car actually built up on boost. So on the moderate pass, I ran it out for the eighth at uh, 6.2 at 120, which was great. I felt like that would get us to where we needed to be. <laughs> one of the requirements, you either have to go 135 or a 999, so anything less than a 10. So on the full passes, we went up to the line and I clicked off a 10.6 at 136. <laughs>
coming on boost again. So just mm -hmm. still fighting those boost issues. Uh, I went around and coming back, my number was still on the scoreboards, which I thought was weird because I thought I broke something and I oiled down the track and, and I was like, what's going on? I get back into the staging lanes and my number's still sitting there. Nobody's gone yet. I wonder why time's still up, nobody's gone. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I think you were the last Nobody, person. Really, to run you might have been the last. You were the last person to run in the first bracket, session though, of like. Bronze. Oh. No, he didn't. You didn't look at like. <laughs> did I just fuck everybody up? <laughs> Bitching about it all weekend, and now I'm that guy. And uh, I was like, did I just break? Did I oil down the track? Like, why are we stopped? And they're like, oh, they're doing an intermission. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that no big deal there, you know. And then the lady walks back over to me like five minutes later, and she's like, are you ready? And I was like. What do you mean? She's like, do you want to go again? And I was like, all right. So literally my number's still sitting up there and I'm looking at the 10-6, like I gotta beat this number and uh, go around and then clicked off 10-4, 136 again. Exact same, exact same mile per hour. Coming around, Phil, the track official tech guy, he's like, you did it! And I was like, what'd I do? He's like, you got your license. I was like, no way! I was like, that's awesome. He's like, you're done, you, you got her. So, uh, got all, everybody signed off for the passes and whatnot. A uh, great group of guys in the tower that were able to sign off on my passes and was able to get my license that weekend. So, hopefully now we figure out my boost issues so that I can be able to compete with Denon. Because Denon had a great weekend himself. First time out with the car, uh, previous best pass that that car made was a, a, a 10.5 at 133. Um, this past time that he went out, he went a 10.4 at 140. So 10.4, 140. That's, That's personal a good best. mile an hour, yeah, personal best. 180, 60 foot. Yeah. 60 foot, if I could get that to like a 1.6, I'd be low 10. Yeah. Hey, you're getting there, man, for sure. Yeah. That's the most mile an hour in the 8th I've ever had, too. Actually, and the most mile an hour I've had in the quarter. 140 so. is your highest mile an hour, so this is a personal best pass for you? Yeah, it's All right, pretty much cool. across the board, with, except with the exception of the 60 foot and maybe the 8th mile ET. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Nice run. Thanks, Picked dude. up on mile per hour, picked up a 10, but also, he was on horrible tires, which in the video you'll see, he really didn't give a shit about those tires anymore because he lit off one of them and totally blew a tire out, uh, cords and all. So the way that his car is set up, he's got the mile per hour, uh, he's got the power uh, for the car to be able to be in the nines, which I feel like uh, still to come, uh, we need to line up his car and my car now um, because he's gonna have the ability to have his license next year as well. Leaving uh, the racetrack, we didn't accomplish everything, every objective that we went out to, um, but some things kind of just got thrown in there that was made it highlights, right? It was great to be able to, one, get my license, overcoming multiple hits that was telling me I wouldn't be able to do it, and then we got it taken care of, got it done. Uh, Denon um, was able to uh, uh, be able to get some really good seat time. Mike got second place in his class, which you know never has happened before, so that was awesome. Uh, I got, we had 13.20, um, which in my opinion, um, that's like a bucket list item to have 1320 yes. ride in your car, right? Yeah, I mean, you got Kyle there from 1320, one of the founders of 1320, and he was all into our team and like how we were doing stuff. He would stop by, see how we're doing, 
uh, multiple times, just a small, you know, interaction. I'm assuming that there's probably gonna be some video floating around of him riding in my car while we're doing burnouts or whatever in the campground or in the pit areas and then uh, getting pulled over by security and escorted back to our pit, you know? So it was, it was totally worth it in the end and uh, I feel like it was a major accomplishment for ID racing. It's just that milestone, just kind of getting more comfortable, more comfortable and now we're kind of like, uh, we're, we're there. You know, it'd be like really easy to oversee all the accomplishments that happened that weekend because, say, you set out for a totally different goal, you didn't make it, but you did ten other things that are as cool. Yeah, they're as the, cool. The alternative was not doing it. Like Ben could have gave up. Yeah, you know, it could have rained. You know, it, it could have rained. No passes, but it yeah. was a great weekend. His car could have not. The chassis might not have got certified. Uh, he could have had an engine fire on the dyno when we were there. You know what I mean? There could have been multiple things that happened um, that would have stopped the entire progress of what we were doing, but just not saying that, oh, we're, we're gonna give up here and we're gonna try to go a different route with this. We just kept in focus in that, um, and we wanted to have that, you know, convertible versus convertible. Everybody wants to see what an LS and what a rotary can do against each other on a staging line, one five-speed, one automatic, you know. Um, I would say one consistent, one not. <laughs> <laughs> that that kind of leads into like maybe you guys have a plan for next year. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, uh, next year is going to be one of those things where we wanted to show everybody uh, this trick video of us going head to head, but there's more to come. I feel like now we kind of can leave it on that high note and then coming back into it next year um, and uh, uh, get Denon out there with some more seat time. And I think that it's gonna happen. We're, we're gonna see what uh, what both can do. And between that and now, I don't think anybody else is gonna make that happen. I would dare anybody out there to go make one convertible, or two convertibles, one this power and one that power, and put them head to head and get within the nines. Might be a good place to end it, I don't know. Yeah. Shots fired there. <laughs> yeah, shots fired. Yeah. Let's see somebody else so, do yeah. it. Anybody else that's got a team yeah. that works that could you go or have at her, I guess. Yeah, have at her. We're gonna make it happen. So yeah. that's what's gonna that's that's what we're all about. Yeah, but. cool. That's yeah. a good idea. I think that's a good song.